Okay, so far with the Springfield trapdoor, we determined what we're going to do with it. Is the gun safe to shoot? Uh, and now is, what are we going to shoot in it? What type of ammunition? Smokeless or black powder? I had mentioned that using a jacketed bullet in the old original barrels is not good. Why? First step you have to do, you determine your gun is safe to shoot and everything, is you have to slug the bore or drive a lead plug down there and measure the groove diameter. This is critical. You have to know what your groove diameter. On average, they're like 460, 460 thousands. Most jacketed bullets are 457 thousands. That is what the groove diameter of a modern made 4570 rifle barrel is, I think, the standard. So if you have a Marlin lever action gun or a newer gun in 4570, that's what the groove diameter is. So if you're shooting a jacketed bullet in that, that's fantastic. It'll work. But the older guns, two things are not in your favor. One is the groove diameter is bigger, and the steel is not like modern steel. Okay, uh, and what happens with a jacketed bullet is when it rides in the bore, it'll engage some of the rifling, but there's a gap because the bullet's not big enough to, to hit the bottom of the grooves. So that little gap, when the powder goes off, it blows past the bullet like a little blowtorch and creates heat and friction, which actually wears on the barrel. That's why I don't recommend shooting jacketed bullets in original Springfield trapdoors. In replica guns or modern guns, it's fine, okay? But in a trapdoor, it'll erode the barrels because the steel is not modern type of gun barrel steel. Okay, so then that takes us, our basic thought here is you got to know the groove diameter. And like I said, 460, the problem most people have is, irregardless of what you load, smokeless or black powder, is you're using the wrong diameter bullet. I have some bullet molds here. And we're going to go with expensive and cost savings. This one here is a Lee. It is a 459 diameter, which is good enough for the... Uh, 4570, and this is a different type though. This is more of a more modern long range. I actually bought this for use in another gun of the same caliber, but it may be used in the 4570, and I may develop a load for it. Lee also makes an original, which would be the uh, 405 grain bullet hollow base. That's the mold they use there. Now, a lot of people use this mold, it is an exact identical copy of what the original bullet was in a proper diameter, sized 459, used with black powder. Okay, so you got that option. Now when you get into some other molds like this one here, this 457 mold by Lee, this is for 4570 but a more modern one. It does not have the wide grease grooves like for black powder. It's good for smokeless but it is still too small of a diameter. Okay, not good for a trapdoor. It's going to cause leading. Okay, and I'll go over how leading goes. Or you can go. I got a uh, video specifically on the Brooks True Bar mold. I had a custom mold made for the 500 grain bullet, which this mold is specifically designed to cast a bullet that replicates the original government thing in the 4570. Okay. Now, making your choices. All right, smokeless powder. A lot of people don't like the full black powder because it is a little bit more time consuming. Uh, there's more involved in reloading it. There's other little tools and things you have to get. But shooting it and cleaning it really isn't a problem. I think the problem is people just don't like taking care of their guns and cleaning them. I see it a lot, all the time. People don't like cleaning the guns. And, and, and the trouble involved, especially when you have to do it the same day, keep on top of it, then check it. You know, it's kind of a pain and people don't like doing it, that's why they avoid black powder and corrosive ammo like the plague. Okay? That's the uh, kind of black powder. The, uh, well, let's take smokeless powder. 
right? Consuming, we're going to skip the jacket of bullets and go with cast bullets. Rule of thumb is if you're using smokeless powder and you got a cast bullet, you should be casting a bullet or using a bullet diameter one to two thousandths larger than your groove diameter so you don't get leaded. How do you get leaded, leading with uh, smokeless powder? When a bullet diameter is small, smaller than the groove diameter, much like with a jacketed bullet, gas escapes around and blows by. I said blow back, it's blow by is what you call it. The little gap, the gas will get ahead of the bullet and actually with a cast bullet, it's like a little blowtorch, softens it or melts it to the point where it just smears down your barrel and it's like welded on there. And this will build up and impair accuracy. And this is doesn't matter what type of powder you use, black powder or smokeless. You want, if, well, I mean, black powder, you use a slightly under diameter bullet, but I'll get into that when we talk about black powder. Most people figure smokeless powder, hard cast bullet, because the hardness of the bullet keeps it from letting. Well, it, it's not true. Uh, it helps, but you must have a, a larger bullet diameter. The bullet must be larger than the groove diameter. So it's like a plug, it's sealed when it hits. The smokeless powder is not going to push the bullet to make it form into the barrel like black powder does. So you have to have a larger bullet. And that kind of runs into the problem to do that correctly. Now you're making a real large diameter bullet, it might not chamber in the gun and everything else. The other thing with smokeless powder, and this is another controversy, People put a wad, because you're usually using a small charge, so they put some sort of tissue paper, Dacron, whatever, to hold the powder charge against the base of the case and the primer. Because the idea is when the cartridge lays in the gun, the powder may settle down and the flash hole may be above the powder. Okay, and when you fire, the spark sets all the powder off in a weird way, it's called detonation. And I don't want to get into an argument because I've had people tell me that putting a little wad or spacer on smokeless powder is dangerous, and there's some study to that. And there are people that tell you that detonation happens, and some people say it does, doesn't, whatever. It's a controversy. I'm not saying that using smokeless powder is wrong. I'm not saying that you cannot use it. And I'm not saying that it will not work and you can hit something with the rifle. If done right and work with, and a lot of people, a lot of black powder shooters have used smokeless powder for years. Uh, I'm not going to go that route. And now it goes to black powder. Why with the black powder? Black powder is a little different. You want a bullet that's soft, like the original ones. They weren't hard cast. They were actually swaged on a machine in soft alloy lead. How that all works is the soft lead, black powder works a little different than uh, smokeless powder. Alright, uh, battery ran out, sorry about that. Okay, so now on the black powder. The difference is with a black powder load, and it's the way it worked originally, we can't exactly replicate it because like I said, they used swaged bullets which are stamped down on the press, not cast bullets. Cast bullets, no matter how good you are at casting, uh, they're not the same thing as swaged bullets. So, with the black powder, you want your bullet lubricated with black powder lube, and you want it a couple thousands smaller than a groove diameter. Smokeless powder works, it burns and produces pressure, which for jacketed bullets is fine. Black powder works on a different principle. It detonates like an explosion. And it burns and you know generates pressure in that, but it's a little bit different. So when black powder charges go off behind a soft lead bullet, the idea is the force hits the back of the bullet, it kind of squishes or bumps up the bullet. It's like thumping it in the back with a hammer. And that inertia makes the lead form a perfect seal.